Hi everybody, in this video I am going to show you how I built this camper completely from scratch, start to finish, every detail. So find yourself a comfy chair, relax, and I hope you enjoy. The last time this pop-up camper was used was 2013. In the spring of 2014 I popped it up and it was destroyed by mice. It's been a project on my mind for a long time. I just didn't know how I wanted to do it. Now that I finally figured it out, here is its transformation from being a worthless pile of junk to a nice little camper that we're going to enjoy for a long time. I'm gonna keep the stove. I'm gonna take some cleaning. Now, originally I had thought I might just pop the camper up and build a wall between the bottom and the roof. I kind of decided that wasn't the way I wanted to go, and honestly, after tearing this thing apart, I'm really happy I didn't. Look at how flimsy that is. All it is is four corner braces and an aluminum top rail. Piece of junk. I might use the same stove that came out of it, and that's got this quick connect fitting, so I'll save this. The rest I'll probably scrap. For my floor, I used three quarter inch marine grade plywood. That should last just as long as the camper. And a quarter over. I had planned to glue everything and I forgot to put the glue on so I just lifted it up and ran a nice bead of glue all the way around. Most of the floor I fastened from the bottom with stainless steel screws but some of the floor you couldn't get past the frame so I had to drill a big enough hole to sink the screw head into the wood and run self tappers from the top. This time I remembered the glue ahead of time. A lot easier that way. A couple of clamps really makes it a lot easier to keep that plywood in place when you're trying to run screws in from the bottom side. This sheet of plywood will bridge the gap on the long seam. It makes a huge difference in the stiffness of the floor. So I'm just trying to figure out how high to make the table, how high to make the bench, so that I can figure out where I want to put my window. This feels pretty good. Perfect. Bottom of the window, about three inches higher than this table stand. About 32 inches with my window height. Before I get started framing anything, I like to figure out where my doors and windows are going to go. I'll mark that on the floor, then I'll note the height for the windows on the floor as well. That way I don't have to figure it out multiple times. For the framing of the camper, I used 2x2s for the studs in the wall and 2x3s for the corners. For the ceiling, I had planned to use 2x3s, but I changed my mind and went with 2x4s. I also changed my mind on the front wall. I think it gets a lot of wind resistance from being towed down the road, and I felt that maybe 2x4s would be a better choice. Also, it gives a little more wood for those angled boards 
from the shorter portion of the front wall to the roof to screw to. One thing I think is very important is if you're using small lumber like 2x2s, you definitely need to pre-drill every single hole because as soon as you start splitting that lumber, you're making it weaker and it's not going to last as long. I'm not sure how regular campers are built, but I framed my windows in just like you would a house. I did later in the video change that top 2x2 two two out to a 2x4 so that it would have more strength, especially because I had a stud on top of it. To fasten down my walls, I pre-drilled all the holes, ran a nice bead of construction adhesive, then screwed it down with two inch screws. Those go into the plywood but don't hit the steel frame below. After the camper's totally sided, I run two inch screws up through the bottom. So I'll drill a small hole in the steel frame and then run stainless steel screws through the frame, through the plywood, into the bottom plate. That way the walls are really well fastened to the trailer. I didn't get a shot of gluing this corner, but I glued every corner, lined it up really nice, and then screwed them tight. This is awesome. It was really cool at this point to start seeing how it was going to look. It's hard to picture how much room you're going to have in a 10 foot 4 by 7 foot box, which honestly was a lot more than I expected. Here's that front wall. Like I said, I decided to go with 2x4s, make it a little stronger. Actually, it was kind of nice too. It gave me a little more room for wiring because all the wires coming into the camper came from there. And they all converged there to go to the inverter that goes underneath of the front seat at the table. Close it in and go right now. Sounds good to me. Here I'm adding a window that I forgot to put in. It's not really that hard. Lay it out just like a regular window, make a couple of cuts and put some boards in and good to go. Now on to the roof. The first thing I'm going to do is figure out these angle cut boards that finish my front wall. Once I've got one made, I'll use that board as a template to make all the rest of them. I'll cut them all out, just kind of lay them up there and make sure they look right. Come back, Charlie. You can't stand right under the saw. Come on. Now at this point I've got all my front wall angle boards sitting there in place but none of them are screwed down because unfortunately it won't fit out of the garage with the roof on. I'm building it kind of as a modular type frame. I'm not screwing any of it down to the camper walls but I'm screwing it all together and then I'll just lay it on the floor, wheel the camper out and put it together. And you might think, why go through all that trouble to build it, tear it apart, and then put it back together later? And that's mainly because of rain. I'm not breaking any speed records building this camper. So if I can build as much inside as possible, 
before I'm ready to actually get the roof on. I won't have to deal with tarps and trying to keep it dry and out of the weather nearly as much as I would otherwise. I was pretty happy. Even this 2x4 frame wasn't very heavy. Once I had the frame up there, I clamped it down and made sure the walls were even with the edge of the frame. I screwed one frame completely down, then screwed the other frame to the first frame and pulled it nice and tight before anchoring it to the walls. To fill the gaps between the front angled boards to make up the front corner, I had to cut that board at an angle and screw it in place. That way the front will have something to nail to all the way across as well as the roof. This doesn't have a whole lot holding it down, so I'm going to box in the wheel wells, piece 2 by 8 then I'll sheet it with some paneling or something. But what I think I'll do is I'll screw this 2 by 8 this way and then I'll run some screws down along the edge and I'll make a box so hopefully that will support this better yet. Two and an eight. I'm ready to start sheeting the camper. First thing I'm going to do is make a rough template for cutting out this wheel well. Now I'll get a measurement from the back of the camper to the edge of the template so I know where to put the template on my sheeting. It was close but still needed a little trimming. I'm not sure if manufactured campers are glued on the sheeting, but I'm going to glue and staple every sheet. The sheeting I'm using is quarter inch Luon. I know there's stronger and better materials you could use, but you have to keep in mind this was a pop-up camper and the tag on the axle states that it is good for 2200 pounds and I definitely want to keep it under that weight. For the roof, I used quarter inch plywood. It's a little heavier than Luan, but it's much, much harder to break than Luan. Once I had it up there, I was glad I used it. The roof felt nice and stiff to walk on. I almost made the mistake of just cutting out the window openings, which would have been really bad considering they're curved on the corners and that would have left big holes. I had to trace the window out and cut it that way. I haven't quite figured out what I'm going to do with the siding here. I'll probably try to follow this, but I'm not sure if there's a trim piece. I don't recall seeing a trim piece that'll cover something like this. So what I'm gonna do for now, I'm gonna run a nice bead of silicone along it. I had to call around a lot, but I was able to find some actual camper siding at an RV surplus store. 
First thing you'll notice is definitely a lot different with camper siding than regular house siding is you start at the top. You staple it all the way across the top, hold it down kind of flat so that it doesn't have any bubbles and staple the bottom side. And the next piece below it slides up into a channel on the upper sheet. Then you staple the bottom side of that sheet. I was told to use wide crown staples, but I couldn't find a wide crown staple gun in town so what I'm using is narrow crown staples, one inch long, and I'm putting about three or four on each stud. Another thing that seemed really important, make sure your siding sheets are all the way to the ends of your camper. The siding sheets that come up to them from the other direction, then make sure they go right to the siding that you've already put on. That way your corner joint is really small and easy to cover with putty tape. For the most part, it's a pretty simple process. I think it's easiest to mark your window cuts like this. It's a lot like house siding, only in reverse. Start from the top and work your way down. The trim piece for the bottom that I use slides into the siding just like the other ones. So what you do is you rip your very last sheet of siding down to the width that you need to fill that gap. Honestly, one thing you'll notice if you've watched any of my other videos is that I always point out things I would have done differently. Although this siding looks nice, if I had it to do over, I would have gotten a flat siding, mainly because windows and doors would be a lot easier to install and guarantee an excellent seal. To protect the corners of the rubber roofing, I was told to use the fiberglass mesh drywall tape. Put it on the top and wrap it down around the side a little bit. That's supposed to protect the rubber roofing from any rough corners. I did do some sanding on my corners as an added precaution, but it's supposed to work really well. Now I'm not an expert on rubber roofs. In fact, I've never installed a rubber roof in my life. I'm going off of instructions that were written down for me by a really helpful guy at the camper surplus place. What he told me was lay out your entire sheet of rubber roofing over top of the camper and then fold half of it back. Roll out your adhesive for that half and then lay that half down. Once that half's laid down, pull the other half back. Make sure that when you pull the other half back, you see the adhesive from the first half. Otherwise, you're gonna have a big void where there's no glue and if there's no glue it's not going to be stuck down in that spot and, and that could really cause a problem. Once all your adhesives out lay the rest of the rubber roofing down and squeegee every single air bubble out. It helps to get down kind of eye level with the top of the roof to see those air bubbles. I noticed at first it seemed like I was doing pretty good and then I got down low and noticed there's quite a few air bubbles left so Definitely make sure you get those out. Any air bubble is going to be a void, and if there's a void, that's not going to be stuck down. To finish the rubber roofing on the edges, you cut it a couple inches long, pull it down tight, fold it over, and staple it. Make sure that that fold is small enough that your trim piece will cover it. Then you put your trim piece on later and do some caulking. This piece is for the front of the camper. The top one inch has to sit on top of the rubber roofing, get nailed through it. Well, I need to bend this first one inch to match this angle that I matched on the roof. I'm gonna try to do this one by hand and you know not mess it up too bad. And a little bit at a time. Pretty close on that bend. I'm gonna go with that. So the way it was explained to me, you fold this rubber back on the roof, you tack it down. The siding goes over the rubber, you tack that down, and this piece goes down, you screw this down, and you seal it up with lap sealant. Just 
this siding is aluminum, it's really easy to bend. Bending it evenly is where the trick comes in. I'm not sure if I can do it myself without a break or if I'm gonna need to take it to somebody that has a break. Let's see what I can do first. To make a semi-even bend, I clamp the sheet down with a 2x4 on top of it. I put the edge of my workbench right where I wanted the bend to be and I slowly worked the bend into the sheet. It actually worked pretty well. For my last piece of siding, I wanted a really nice tight fit around this wheel well, so I used a compass to make a template. Scribed a line, cut it out, and it turned out a really good tight fitting piece of siding. Now that all the siding's on, it's time to install the corner and gutter trim. I use putty tape on the corner underneath of all the trim. I don't know if there's a good way to put this stuff on. It seems like the paper sticks really bad to the putty tape. So it took some time. Another thing I noticed was you really want to have your trim in the right spot when you push it down because as soon as it touches that putty tape, it really sticks and it wants to peel it back off if you try to move it. This trim piece is going to cover the front siding where it overlaps the rubber roof. I use putty tape on the bottom I'm gonna make sure it covers that seam perfectly. And I screw it down. Once it's screwed down, I'm gonna let the putty tape ooze out a little bit, scrape it out, and then I'm going to use lap sealant on the rubber roof side and lap sealant on the front side. You wanna be careful not to strip out any screws. So I put them all in, then went back through and tightened them slightly. I installed the putty tape directly to the back of the gutter trim. It made it a lot easier to get the paper off. Maybe that would be a better way to do the corner trim as well. finish off your trim, you use screw cover. It goes inside that channel and covers all the screws, keeps the water out, looks nice. Pretty easy to put in. When I got to the door opening, I cut the siding down and bent it over, basically using it as a piece of flashing. Once it was bent over, I scored it with my knife and broke it so that it wasn't sticking past the threshold and the vinyl and the door could both sit on top of it. I thought I'd go simple with my floor and just get some vinyl that doesn't require being glued down. So I just laid it in, cut it to fit, smoothed out all the wrinkles, and stapled the edges. Ready, go 
camping? Are you ready to go camping, Charlie? I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go camping. After I finished the floor, I ran some wires for lights. This wire is a 14 gauge stranded two conductor, black red. I think I purchased it on Amazon. My lights will all be 12 volt LEDs. This wire will also be ran for one USB outlet. These marker lights have a foam seal, but it wasn't thick enough to fill the low spot in the siding, so I added some putty tape to them. These small wires run from the taillights in the back up to the blinker marker lights on the front. These wires tie the grounds together and one drops down to the frame to ground both blinker lights. There's no particular reason I used those colors, that's just what wires I had left that were long enough. This is for the light switch. I installed one AC outlet and that's mainly to run a coffee pot. I decided to take a quick break from wiring and install the door before it rained. I put a piece of putty tape in every low spot. Honestly, I probably should have used two pieces in every low spot, but I also ran putty tape all the way around the nail flange on the door. Once it's in, I use some inch and a quarter by quarter inch screws. I'm stapling my insulation to the inside edge of the board. That way I can glue my paneling directly to the ceiling. I tied some string to each one of the wires hanging out of the ceiling for the lights. That way we could feed the string through the paneling before we even picked it up and we'd be able to get a hold of the wire easier. I use a staple gun to hang all the sheets because it's easier to shoot a staple and hold a sheet up than it is to drive a nail. But after I was done stapling them up, I went through and nailed them all off with paneling nails. They're little bitty ring shanks, so they should hold pretty good. Plus everything is glued. All the ceiling panels are glued, all the wall panels are glued, and all the exterior wall panels are glued. These wires will all go underneath the seat for the kitchen table, and they will tie into the inverter from the old pop-up camper. I bought these little LED puck lights online. They're super easy to wire up and they just slide in with a spring keeper. You'll notice I'm wiring black to white. That's because these lights use black for positive, white for negative, and my black is negative and I use red for positive. Pretty easy way to work around these wires with this foam board insulation. I cut the insulation right in line with the wire, cut out a little groove in the top of the bottom sheet, pack the wire down in the groove, and then stick the next sheet over top of it. This keeps the wire from having any stress on it from being shoved one way or the other by the insulation. Now I need to build some benches for the kitchen table. 
It's nothing really fancy and most of it's being built out of leftover lumber from framing the camp. Before anchoring this bench down, I cut two equal spacers so that I didn't have to worry about taking multiple measurements. My slide out couch bed is going to go behind this bench, therefore I'm building a removable backrest. So I've made some simple pockets for it to slide into. This cabinet should be big enough for a broom, maybe a small trash can. It couldn't be any wider because the bed is basically going to go from wall to wall once it's slid out. It's a queen size three folding mattress. I found this exterior light online. It was the perfect width to go between two ribs on the siding. Came in a two pack, I only needed one. Pretty good. I had to make my own tabletop. For this I decided to use half inch plywood, then cover that with hung and groove flooring that was left over from doing the last cabin build. For my first piece, I glued it, clamped it, and screwed it to the plywood. That way it wouldn't be able to move while I was pounding the other pieces together. For each piece, I ran some glue in the tongue groove area, and then I put some glue on the plywood. Once I had all the cherry on, I clamped it lengthwise to pull the boards a little tighter together and then I clamped it the other way to hold them to the plywood. Once I had the clamps on, I flipped it over and ran screws in every single board to make sure that they were pulled tight to the plywood. Find the center. To figure out where I was going to mount the table stand to the table, I found center each direction, made center lines, then I made center lines on the table mount itself. Line up the center lines, should be perfectly in the center of the table. All my center marks. I'll eventually put a trim piece around the edge of this table to cover the plywood, but for now that'll work. So I need to get on to some other projects. Using this cherry slab for my countertop for the stove. Right now it's three inches thick, so it needs to be a lot thinner. I need to short it down. I'm gonna make it three feet long and I need to flatten it. So I've got a lot of work to do to this slab. You can buy or build a flattening table to flatten thick slabs like these. It uses a pin router and it would be a lot faster than a hand planer, but you can also do it with a hand planer. It just takes a lot more time and patience. In fact, this took me two and a half to three hours, but I did take it from three inches thick to an inch and a half thick. 
I'm using this curved piece more for function than looks. Although I do like the way it looks, I needed a place to mount a shelf bracket where there wasn't a stud. I plan to either use a DC cooler or possibly a camper fridge of some sort underneath of this. Therefore, I didn't build a base cabinet. These couple shelf brackets really did a good job of making this countertop sturdy. I was pretty happy with how well the old stove top cleaned up and it looks so nice in that cherry countertop. Every kitchen area needs some kind of cupboards. This is going to hold some spices, cooking spray, a couple pans, and some spatulas. Nothing fancy. It's got to have a light on the bottom too. I couldn't find a single propane tank holder, so I improvised. Hey, it still works. This stuff's called M Seal. It's used for steel roofs and valleys. I have no idea what camper companies use to seal their windows. It's some kind of foam. I called to see if I could get some. They said they didn't have any in stock. I should have asked what they use and seen if I could buy somewhere online, some kind of camper place. I think a thinner foam would work just fine. Thinner weather sealing or maybe even putty tape if you had flat siding. But my siding's got those ribs on it. So it needs something thick enough to fill the low spots. This stuff's pretty thick. I'm making sure that where it meets together is on the bottom side and that the top side is one continuous run. These windows are not easy to install by yourself, but it is doable. I use some clamps, that always helps. As far as the M seal, the foam that I used for it, a friend of mine stopped by and he cast a little doubt on it. So. I, I may end up having to trim it back and caulk around it, or I may end up having to pull the windows out and try to find a better foam. But so far there hasn't been any leaks, but it also hasn't rained a lot. And I haven't towed it anywhere in the rain. And that's where you really come into some problems with that driving force of the wind being towed down the road. One bad thing about getting your windows from the surplus place 
is it seems like they normally don't have the right size rings for all their windows and you end up having to take bigger rings and cutting them down to use for your smaller windows. In fact, one of the windows I had to cut two rings down to make the right size. This should be all the lumber, or nearly all the lumber, I need for my slide out couch bed. For one end of this, I used 1x4s to screw to. For the other end, I used 2x4s because that end will be in the center. Once I had it laid out, I squared it up and screwed four corners with multiple screws so that it couldn't come out of square. I use spacers at each end between each board. It's just quarter inch Luan that I use. The reason for this is so once it's screwed down, the boards have a small gap. That way they don't rub on each other when you're trying to pull the couch out into a bed. And of course, made sure I drilled pilot holes and everything. Most slide out beds you see, they fold lengthwise, side to side, so there's two cushions. This one folds three times, therefore the slide out isn't long enough. So I had to figure out how to support the last couple feet of the bed. For this, I made a shelf at the same height as the bench that the bed goes on. And then I put these little slide outs to support this, which will hinge up and sit on top of the slide out. It'll fill the last two feet and let me have an entire bed. Pull this out. You can just reach up if you need to get up in the night. I built the cupboard doors out of leftover flooring and pieces of Luan. Before I stained them, I mounted everything to make sure it fit. That way I could sand it before staining it if it needed to be sanded. Right. Last cupboard door. I'm going to call that a wrap. There are a few things I need to do still. I need to get the wheel bearings packed and make sure they're in good shape. I need to get new tires on it. Trailer sat a long time. I also want to get a heat source in here and some kind of fridge. Those will come in another video down the road. But for now, I'm pretty happy with it. It was a bit of a process and a huge learning process considering most of it I had to figure out on my own. But I'm very happy with the results. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope to see you next time. For now, I'm going camping.